God's richest peace and blessings to you today as we gather uh, once again on this Lord's Day to receive His gifts um, and uh, re render back the divine service to Him that He renders to us through His Word and our fellowship together in His name. We are on the third Sunday of Advent, and as we draw closer to that uh, event of uh, Christ as uh, the light of the world, uh, a lot of Advent wreaths, and it's, you know, it's not written anywhere, but some Advent wreaths actually have a pink candle on the third day uh, to kind of give us that sense of, of we're almost there but not quite yet, but there's this burst of joy on the third Sunday of Advent as uh, we welcome into our hearts and lives uh, Emmanuel, God with us. And so I welcome you today and just pray the Lord's blessings on us and our worship together as we uh, gather in his name. Uh, we also today, uh, as we've been kind of following what we call the heroes of the season, uh, the saints of the season, today actually in many parts of the world, uh, folks are celebrating uh, St. Lucy or St. Lucia uh, today. And uh, so we're going to just, I'll tell you a little bit about her in the sermon today, but um, uh, just my sister's name ha happens to be Lucia. We call her Lucia, uh, but I'm, I'm suspecting that it's probably where we got it or my parents probably got it. Uh, but she's far from a saint, right? No, I'm not just kidding. Don't tell her I said that. Don't tell her. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure she thinks the same about me, too. But uh, this is a good place to be if you don't happen to be a saint, right? Amen. 
So let's uh, join together as we remember our baptisms and our invocation, and I invite you to please stand uh, in, in, the, in the Lord's name today. As we do join together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. O God, our Father, since you have set forth the way of life for us in your beloved Son, we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow him, and our reluctance to bear the cross. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us for the poverty of our worship, our neglect of fellowship and of the means of grace, our hesitating witness for Christ, our evasion of responsibility in your service and our imperfect stewardship of your gifts. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O God. Forgive us that so little of your love has reached others through us, that we have been thoughtless in our judgments, hasty in condemnation, grudging in forgiveness, slow to seek reconciliation, and unwilling to help our neighbors as we ought. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Upon this, your confession, I as a fellow redeemed with you, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as a called and ordained servant of Christ in this place, forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will do it. Amen. O Lord, show us your steadfast love and grant us your salvation. Women? Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps a way. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come to us with your presence. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and grant us a deep and abiding peace for all our days. By the working of the Holy Spirit, lead us to share that joy that is ours without hesitation. Keep us in true faith until the coming of your glorious kingdom, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, where he speaks of the year of the Lord's favor. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For the Lord, for I the Lord love justice, I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring of the Lord the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with, with her jewels. For, for as the earth brings forth its sprouts and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful he will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we join in speaking the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. 
And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. And they asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our faith as we offer a reflection on the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. You may be seated. The word of the Lord from the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John, as I mentioned, the second of two Sundays in Advent where we reflect on the ministry of John. Where the other John, that is the Gospel writer, says of John the Baptist, John came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. Well, everybody knows that the major questions of good, solid, investigative reporting are these questions here. What, where, who, when, why, and how. Answer those and you have a pretty good idea of what the story is and what it is perhaps that the investigative reporters are trying to get to. And I think that that's kind of what the second and third Sundays of Advent do because they bring us to these events surrounding the life of a person by the name of John the Baptist, whom one Jesus did ultimately liken to Elijah. But the whole point is to get at the story. It's to get at the core of what it is that John himself had come to do and what we ourselves are called to do as his witnesses. And so every aspect, and, and I say over every aspect of Advent, and of this season, over every song, over every cantata, every gift, every service of worship, every act of charity, everything that we may do, over this all is this blanket of the Messiah who has come, of our Emmanuel, God with us. That even in Advent we witness to this one who already stands among us as he is here and as he has come. So let us forever be, as John, content to be a light. Content to be a light. Amen. So one of the commentaries that I came across this week had this question. It said, from a pastoral perspective, we want to ask who is present on this third Sunday of Advent and what hopes and fears we bring to the service. Where these last couple of Sundays, at least the first and second Sunday of Advent, cause us to, to become introspective. The intent is for us to look inwards 
and to prepare our hearts for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But quickly we see that as much as Advent may be a time of introspection, it's also a time to look out, to look outwards, focusing on Christ who is the, the heart of our worship, the fount of forgiveness, and not only for us, but for everyone for whom he has come. So to help us do that, we return to those questions. First, the who? No, not the rock band. I had to use that. I just had, in fact, I was kidding with the elders before the service that at some point we should probably break out into Pinball Wizard or something. But no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but the who? The who of the story. And who is that true who of the story? Verse 6, if you have your Bibles, uh, open up to John 1. There was a man sent, sent, that's an important word because he doesn't come on his own authority. He comes as an official sent on behalf of another on a mission from God whose name was John, which in the Hebrew, the name means the Lord is gracious. Yahweh is gracious or merciful. The Lord is merciful. So just as the name of Jesus describes what he would do, namely the Lord saves, so also does John's name describe who he is. And in fact, if you were to ask John that question, who are you, he would say, the Lord is merciful. The Lord is gracious, with all of the emphasis being on the Lord. Indeed, he's here to, to be merciful, to be gracious, to be that Savior for each and every one of us. That it's all about Jesus. And that it's always been about Jesus, from the time of Eden to now. Even this one whose sandals we ourselves are not worthy to stoop down un to untie. Know that he calls us into this relationship with him. Because the Lord is merciful. That's your name too. By this relationship that God enters into you through Jesus. That's your name. There's a name change. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is merciful. Which makes Advent, again, not about John. At least that's what the other John, the gospel writer, says about him. Verse 7, he came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. What is it that John has come to do? What is it that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now calls us to do? That is to bear witness to the light. Here, it's critical that John is not the baptizer. John is not Elijah. John is not the prophet. Deuteronomy 18 is probably in mind there. Moses, the greatest prophet. He's not any of those people. What is John? He is a martyria. And that's the Greek word for witness. And if you heard martyr in that, that's exactly by design. That's where we get the word. He's a witness. He ultimately will be a martyr. A witness that's sent by God to testify what? To the word of God made flesh. The light that no darkness will ever, ever be able to extinguish. That it's not about John at all. Unlike two southern bells who were once visiting with each other, where one was clearly monopolizing the conversation, and that when she finally took a breath, this is what she said. Well, honey, enough of me talking about myself. Why don't you talk about me for a little while? <laughs> it's not about John. It's not about us. Where to bear witness is not to draw attention to oneself, but ultimately to point to another. That is Jesus, the light of the world. Where scripture tells us that every matter in scripture has to be established by two or three witnesses for it to be considered true. Well, John, actually, the gospel, lines up seven witnesses that Jesus is true, one of them being John himself set apart 
to be that purpose. That he, pointing to Jesus, being the real what of the whole thing. The heart and soul of John's message. The heart and soul of the church's message. The heart and soul of this church's message. The heart and soul of who we are as individuals. He was not the light, verse 8, but he came to bear witness about the light. That is an incredibly important theme in God's word. The light. Where among all of God's gifts, light is one of the greatest things given in order to bring order to the world, to illumine the world, to curb the world's darkness, to point to life, being essential for life, symbolizes the pleasures of life, such as gladness and new life in God. As a divine gift to the nations, Jesus himself was a light to the nations, a light to the Gentiles in Luke chapter 2, fulfilling the promise of God to Abraham and to Israel, and where through him, through this light, we ourselves, according to God's word in John 12, become the children of light. Which ties in nicely with Lucia, whose name actually derives from the Latin lux, or the Spanish luz, which means light. Sometimes we call her Lucy for short, St. Lucy. My sister hated that name. She liked to be called Lou, or Lucia, but not Lucy. She hated that. But it was a Christian woman who existed under the emperor Diocletian's reign. And she chose to give away her sizable dowry instead of Mary. So she remained a virgin all her life. Her reasoning was this. Why give it away when you're forced to rather than when you are willing? Why give it away when you're forced to than when you're willing? But see, that didn't suit well with the potential suitor, the arranged marriage, who happened to be a pagan, who then turned her in because he wanted the money, not the wife. And she eventually gave her life for the sake of the gospel. But she's not only associated with light, she's associated with sight, which sometimes in the icons you will often see, as in this case, a dish with two eyeballs on it. Because as part of her suffering, her eyes were gouged out. Celebrated in certain parts of the world today, actually, if you happen to be Swedish descent, this is a huge festival uh, where the oldest girl in your family Let's see, I guess that would be you, Carrie, would uh, put on a white robe and you would put on a red sash and you'd put a wreath on your head with candles coming out of it, which that sounds like an accident. It's waiting to happen. And you would go around town and you would give gifts to other women and other girls in your community. Still a very important festival. But let's not get lost with the legend and the trappings of that because, again, it was all about the light. Just like with John, it was all about the light. The voice of one crying in the wilderness makes straight the way of the Lord. The light that issued forth in this voice, how? With lights on, gifts given. How in our own lives, with, with acts of charity, with prayers of compassion, of reaching out to those that perhaps we haven't seen in a while, to share with them this, this love of God in Christ Jesus, all to point, even as it flows from this one thing, Jesus Christ, the light of life, the light of the world. God had caused this light to appear in the midst of this sin-darkened world, in the person of Jesus the Savior and John's message and Lucia's message and all of the messages of those that have gone before us have been the same thing. Do not miss him. Don't miss him. Whatever the circumstances in your life, 
whatever situations that you're facing, whatever difficulties, whatever fears that are happening in your life or in the lives of those that you care about, don't miss him. Don't miss him. The increasing curtness of John's responses gets us to this. Who are you? He confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you the Elijah? I am not. His answers get shorter and shorter. Are you the prophet? No. What aren't you getting about me that I have not already told you? What are you not getting about me and about you? It's the light of life living in you and me. Although it's not about what has God done for me lately, as it is so much, let me tell you what my God can do for you. For you. David Bartlett says we follow God or Jesus at, at, at a distance, really. Because remember the phrase a number of years ago, what would Jesus do? It was on buttons and whatever. He goes on to say, well, what would Jesus do? He would walk on water. <laughs> he would heal the sick. He would raise the dead. Which on a good day, we may, I guess with a little bit of faith, may be able to do the same thing. But it's not so much about what would Jesus do. It's what would Jesus have you do. And what would Jesus have you do in your situation, in your context, with your gifts, with what he's given to you? Just let the voice ring out. That's the where. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, this world is a wilderness. Just let your voice ring out. Let God do the rest. Let the voice ring out wherever and whenever the Lord has put you so that others may know, so that others may see. That as we point them to Jesus and say, there, that's the one you need to be looking at for forgiveness and healing and freedom and peace. Surely we have met him. Amen? And if we have met him, if we have met him in the words of our sins are forgiven, if we have met him in the waters of holy baptism, if we have met him at the banqueting table, and our lives have been changed and transformed, if those gifts have any meaning for us, why not someone else? Why not others? Why not point them to the same word, the same water, the same table? Where ours, as David Bartlett again notes in his reflections on the gospel, is we don't proclaim, believe, or perish. What we proclaim is come and see. Come and see for yourselves if what I tell you is not true. If what I show you is not true. And that's exactly what John does. A couple of days later, after our text in John 1, he sends a couple of his disciples after that guy, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus turns around and sees them following him. And he says, what are you seeking? And instead of answering the question, they say, well, where are you staying? And Jesus said, come, and you will see. And they did so until the 10th hour, or at the 10th hour. Child of God, having enjoyed our 10th hour and more with him, Jesus brings us back on this third Sunday of Advent to the question of when. When. Of when in our own lives. People need to be convinced, certainly, that Jesus is the Christ, but your job isn't to convince them. Let the Holy Spirit do that. Let God's word do that. Let God's gifts do that. Let the means of his grace do that. 
but the time is now. And Paul says that when he says, Behold, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Where for everything that 2020 may have been for us, resolve to end it where every year, past, present, and future, needs to begin and needs to end, and that is ultimately with your Savior, Jesus. Jesus. Where in all told, I'm sure you believe it, that the greatest gift that we can give anybody in any season is Jesus. So, the questions, who, what, how, where, why, when, the who, again, not the rock group, is the Lord is gracious. The who is you, the Lord is merciful. The what, to bear witness to the light of Jesus Christ. The how is simply to let your light shine, issuing forth in this invitation to come and see. The why, so that others may come to the same blessed hope that you yourselves have come to. Wherever the Lord has placed you. And the when is now. Where John and Lucia and countless others have taught us that the joy of the church and the joy of each of our lives is found in one who is already among us, Emmanuel, God with us. And only in Jesus is there the forgiveness of sins. Only in Jesus is there a remedy for those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Having now joined John and Lucia in pointing others to Christ, may we walk away from those encounters to do so with great joy. Wherein there was and is only one real given for us to do as we await for our Lord's glorious return, and that is to go in his name. That like John and like Lucia, let us simply point others to the Savior and then get out of the way. ever remaining content to be a light. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Join together in singing our hymn of response.
So at this time, we'd like to just spend a little bit of time uh, in prayer, and those prayers are printed for you on pages 10 and 11 of your bulletins, and I would invite you to please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God and Jesus Christ and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole Christian community around the world, that as people united in faith we may witness to the good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. Lord, be gracious to us. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for all the nations of the earth, that in those places where strife and discord rule, there may be times of peace. We pray for our own nation, that we may find joy in that which is done through it by the leaders and by the people. Lord, be gracious to us and help us, good Lord. We pray for all those situations that we encounter in our daily lives, that the joy of Jesus may be evident in all that we say and do. Lord, we ask you, show kindness to us and hear us. We pray for the special concerns on our hearts today, including the health and family needs and situations that are part of life as we are living in these last days. Gracious Father, we ask your blessings upon those in long-term residences, and especially our members of Bob and June and Rose. And for those who are in any stage of illness or recovery, Father, we commit each of them to you, Lord, Heavenly Father, and ask your blessings upon them for healing and strength. Lord, come among us and grant us what is needed according to your mercy. For all those who have completed their earthly journeys in faith and now rest from their labors in eternal peace and joy, serving as witnesses of your never-ending care, we bless you, O Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Father, we also continue to pray for all of those in various stages of mourning and grief as we pray for the Boyd family, the Reiter family, the Lambert family, the Island family, and we ask your blessings upon each of them, gracious Father, that you would give them the hope of the comfort of resurrection in life in Jesus. We pray for the Lawson, the Lightfoot, the Lincoln families, Father, and ask your blessings upon them that you would grant peace and joy to them. We pray for George and all of those that work at our school, teachers and staff, asking your blessings upon them, as well as all those, gracious Lord, in our community who are now teaching online. We pray for patience, we pray for joy and your continuous blessing. Even as we pray for the health and well-being of all of our families and our members and our friends. We rejoice with Katie at her successful surgery, and with Cash, who is now cancer-free. We rejoice with Sharon and Gloria, who have birthdays this week, and with Miriam and myself, who celebrate our anniversary. Father, bless and keep each of them. We're into your hands, O Lord. We commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grass withers, and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Blessings to you. Um, if you have an offering today uh, and you would like to lead that, uh, the offering plate is in the back of the uh, church. Thank you for, uh, for that. Um, as we uh, look to Christmas, uh, we have decided uh, that we will be doing um, three services. We'll be doing two on Christmas Eve, uh, one at four and one at nine, which is our traditional times, and then also on Christmas Day at 10 o'clock. Uh, we don't necessarily imagine a big run on the Christmas Day service, um, but uh, if you happen to have family coming in or you know of your intent uh, as to which of the two services that you're going to attend on Christmas Eve, would you just fire off an email to us so we can get an idea of what that's going to look like? Because if it looks like the 4 o'clock service gets a little top-heavy, we may have to uh, try to work with that somehow. But uh, at any rate... If you could just uh, let Miriam know sometime this week uh, which service that you would be going to uh, and your family if they're coming into town or whatever, please let us know that. And we are uh, that short of requiring, uh, but just uh, given the fact that there'll be other people traveling and that, uh, if you could uh, uh, just remember to wear your mask specifically in that service, that would be great. So uh, any other announcements? Yes. Uh, the services for communion for Christmas will be the 9 o'clock and Christmas Day at 10. So those two services will have communion. So, uh, yes, thank you for asking that. All right, well, blessings to you guys. Have a great week. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Amen.